What's really going on in here? What's up everybody and welcome to another Road to Red episode. I'm Anthony Saratelli of Jersey Filmmaker and today I want to demystify Red's R3D file structure. If you've ever had to pull media off a Red Mini Mag, you'd know that their file structure is a little more in depth than most. It's not just one folder with all the clips in it as it might be with many other cameras, but instead it breaks each clip into its own folder. So let's start at the top and when you insert your Mini Mag and open up the drive on your computer, you'll see an RDM file folder. RDM stands for Red Digital Media. Within the RDM folder, you'll see a whole bunch of folders depending on how many clips you recorded because every time you push record to start a new take, a new folder will be created. These folders, as you can see, are titled as RDC files. This stands for Red Digital Clip. Let me stop right here and explain what the crazy file numbering system is that Red uses. The first set of numbers and characters are the camera ID and real number, or in the now digital era, your media card number. The first letter represents the camera ID, so the A in this case is set to camera A, as opposed to camera B, camera C, and so on. The number at the end, in this case two, is the real number or media card number that you set when formatting the card. Back in the day, you would label reels by number, and here we're labeling them the same way, only they aren't actual reels of film, they're mini mags, but it's still titled the reel number. Now you could label each card with a new reel number if you'd like, but if it's a longer shoot, like over days or weeks, you could use that number to represent the day you're shooting on. For example, this would represent day two. After the first underscore is another letter, and this is the camera position. Your choices here are left, right, and center, which will show up as L, R, or C, respectively. The number that follows is the clip number. This will increase by one every time you start recording a new clip, and as I mentioned earlier, will also create a new folder. And finally, the last combination of numbers and letters are always generated randomly to make sure your file names remain unique. So if you were to mistakenly label two cameras the exact same, so they're spitting out the same camera ID, real number, and camera position on the same take, have no fear because the odds of the last six numbers and characters being the same are just about zero. So now let's dive into the RDC files. In here you may see multiple types of files. What you will see depends on the codec you are recording in. If you're recording in RAW, you will see Red's proprietary and awesome R3D files. If you're adding some Apple ProRes proxies in there or just recording straight to ProRes, you may have some MOV files. And if you're recording Avid's DNxHD, you will see MXF files. What I'm displaying here are the raw R3D files along with ProRes proxies. You will also see an RTN file. This stands for red thumbnail. It's just a randomly generated frame grab that is used to display a thumbnail in your NLE or wherever you are pulling the files into. You'll also see a cube file in here. This has to do with the LUT that I baked into the 2K ProRes proxy. I'm gonna save explaining how I did this for another episode, but for now, just know that these cube files can end up in these folders. Another file that can end up in these folders are RMD files. This stands for red metadata. If you change the metadata in something like Red Cine X, for example, and the file is updated in Premiere, let's say, an RMD file will be created so that any software that is opening the R3D file knows to be updated with your metadata changes. The last thing I wanna to touch on is something you might be asking yourself when looking at these folders. Why are there so many files in the clip folder if you just recorded one clip? The camera automatically maxes out a clip at four gigabytes. It does this for the safety of your files. So if you're recording a clip that ends up being, I don't know, 10 gigabytes, and something were to go wrong at about nine gigabytes, well, the first eight gigabytes should be safe and sound because it's already created and saved that clip to your card. You'll probably have an issue with the last couple gigabytes, but at least your whole take's not ruined. And the cool part about this, and not just the safety of your files, is that even though the files are split up, any nonlinear editing software that accepts R3D files, which is most at this point, automatically knows how to stitch them together so you're getting one full clip just as you recorded it. However, this isn't the same for ProRes and DNxHD files. These will max out at four gigabytes as well, but will not be stitched together by NLEs, which creates an unfortunate extra step in your workflow. But there is a workaround. This only happens if you format your Minimag card as FAT32, which is generally what you'll see being done, but if you format it as UDH, the clip limit becomes a non-issue and it'll record your files straight through. The R3D files, however, will still be split up, but don't worry about that because once again, it's good for the protection of your files. I don't know the technicalities between the FAT32 and UDH formats, but I do know that it works this way, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Last quick tip, 
Do not rename your red files. Extract them from the card as is and never change the names. They're given these unique names for a reason and they need to be left that way. If you're recording proxies, that whole situation could get messed up, but most importantly, the metadata could get lost in the madness and wouldn't be able to be linked to your original files. So just leave them as is so all works smoothly. And that's what I got for today. On future episodes, I will be diving into things like how to format your media card on camera and how to import your clips and mess with the metadata. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. You can click that little bell to be sure you get an alert whenever a new episode is released. If you have any comments or questions, you can of course leave them below or contact me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks so much for watching. Don't go renaming your R3D files, and I'll see you next time.